Alright, what's up YouTubers? Welcome back. They told me I'd never amount to anything and yet here we are making video number two. Whoa. Now, first of all, I have one quick announcement to make. Shout out to my man Ethan for requesting that I do more shout outs. Second of all, I have a little bone of contention to pick with you guys. I sent that last video out to a class of 20 people and yet for some reason this business happened. What is that about? You tell me, someone can explain it to me later on. But let's move on to our second video. We're going to start learning now about how we can apply the knowledge we took from last video to real world molecules. But we're going to start simple. We're going to start with the simplest possible hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. So let's go into alkanes first. Now you might be wondering, alkane is a pretty cool guy, but is he really worth spending all this time on in chemistry? And I mean, all the other alkanes as well, they're probably really interesting people, but why learn about them in chemistry? Now, of course, that is predicated on somewhat of a misunderstanding, you silly people. What we're actually talking about is a type of organic molecule called alkanes. Now, believe it or not, you've actually seen alkanes before, and this is an alkane in front of you right now. And that's because alkanes are simply hydrocarbons, and in fact, they are the simplest hydrocarbons. Alkanes are hydrocarbons that are made of nothing but carbon to carbon single bonds like this one here and carbon to hydrogen single bonds there. So if you see a hydrocarbon that is either carbon carbon single bonds or carbon to hydrogen single bonds, you are looking at an alkane. Now let's have a quick look at how we can name these things. I'm going to show you the first eight alkanes and I want you to see if you can spot the pattern. First of all we have methane, famous for coming out of your rear end at inopportune times. Then we have ethane. Propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, and octane. Now the astute observers amongst you will notice that every single one of these is exactly the same as the one before, except each time you add on another carbon, and then that carbon is bonded to as many hydrogens as it can be. Now if you're very clever, you will also notice that every single one of these molecules has the same ending, this suffix here, A-N-E. And that A-N-E literally means that you are dealing with a molecule that is an alkane. So if you ever see A-N-E at the end of an organic molecule's name, you are dealing with an alkane. And then you notice that all of these molecules have different beginnings to their names. Each one of these different beginnings is a prefix, and each one of these prefixes is a reference to the number of carbons in the molecule. So meth means one, eth means two, prop means three, but means four, pent, well here you can start to see a pattern that is very obvious even from your time learning maths because a pentagon has five sides, pentane has five carbons, hexane six carbons and a hexagon has six sides, heptane seven carbons, a hectagon, heptagon has seven sides, that's a tongue twister, and then octane has eight carbons and an octagon has eight sides. You can also look at every single one of these molecules as skeletal structures, except for methane, because there's no way to show a skeletal diagram of methane other than as a dot, and that wouldn't be very helpful because you might miss it. So we usually write down methane as either CH4 or we can show the structural formula, but every other molecule has a skeletal formula. They're nice and simple to look at, and if you don't know what these things mean, it means you only watched my last video for the funny parts, Shame on you, unless of course you are just a fanboy who likes watching chemistry videos because they were made by me, or I don't even know, whatever other reason. Come see me if you want an autograph. Now when you have a situation like this where you have a whole lot of molecules that are essentially a series following a same basic chemical template, we have a name for it, and that is a homologous series. Now homologous comes from two Greek words, the first Greek word being homo, And don't forget your rough breathing mark, Greek fans. And Logos. Now for those of you who don't know Greek, homo is the Greek word that means same. And Logos is a word that is a bit hard to map into English, but it means something like word or reason or most importantly, plan. So think about homologous as meaning same plan. So there are a group of molecules following the same basic chemical plan or the same basic chemical structure. And what this looks like in practice is a whole lot of molecules that are essentially the same as each other, but 
find the way the plan works and then make each sub successive molecule bigger. Make each successive molecule bigger by the way that that plan works. So in this case, we add a carbon and then we add an extra couple of hydrogens. And because homologous series are so similar to each other, they usually follow a general formula. And in this case, the general formula for an alkane is CN, N being the number of carbons, and then H2N plus two. So take the number of carbons, multiply it by two, then add two. So you think about methane over here, you've got one carbon, CN, N equals one, two N plus two, two times one plus two is four. C1H4, CH4, methane. And it works for propane as well. 2N plus two is six. Uh, so you've got two carbons, six hydrogens, and you'll see that that's exactly the case over there on ethane. And it's the same for propane, it's the same for butane. It's a general formula. Now, in order to name the alkanes, let's quickly revise the rules. The first rule for finding an alkane is count the number of carbons in the chain. Once you know the number of carbons, you then know your prefix. So you will match that number to the prefix. Here are the prefixes here, meth1, eth2, prop3, but4, pent5, hex6, hept7, oct8. Then all you have to do is add ane. So methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. So let's have a quick look at naming these guys. First, over here we have one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. That means we have the prefix prop, and it's all carbon hydrogen bonds, so it ends in ane. Next one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight carbons, and eight is oct. So oct plus ane, octane. This guy here is a space filling mo model, so it's a little bit harder to see, but there's one carbon, two, three, four. Four carbons is bute, so bute, ane. Simple. Let's move on to revising all of this. Alkanes, the key ideas, they have only single bonds, carbon to carbon or carbon hydrogens. And because of this, there's a technical term we use for this type of situation, and that's called saturated. So a molecule is saturated if there's no more way to add any other hydrogens to it because there's no multiple bonds. There's no double bonds, there's no triple bonds. Where something is unsaturated, it means there's a double bond or a triple bond somewhere, but we'll get back to that shortly. Alkanes have the general formula CnH2n plus two. They end in ane and they don't have any functional groups. Now I know what you're wondering. I've just said functional groups. What are they? A functional group is anything in an organic molecule that isn't a carbon hydrogen or carbon carbon single bond. And they are called functional groups specifically because they have a function in a molecule and that function is to change the chemical properties of the molecule. They will either change the chemical reactivity or they might change the strength of the intermolecular forces, which would then lead to changes in things like boiling point, melting point, etc. And any different kind of chemical property, usually related to reactivity, stems from functional groups uh, on more complicated molecules. The simplest functional groups that we're going to learn about, and we are going to learn about them a lot more, that will be the next video, but the simplest ones are double and triple bonds which means we now need to move on to molecules that contain triple bonds and these are things called alkenes. Alkenes are exactly the same as alkanes with only one difference and that is that they contain at least one double bond somewhere on the molecule and to denote that in the name of the molecule we call them enes instead of anes and alkenes are what we call unsaturated, like we talked about before, and that is because there is an opportunity at the point of the double bond to actually react the molecule with hydrogen or any other particular chemical and add more atoms on. There's a very easy opportunity to add things to the molecule, which we can look at. And there's a reason for that, and that is because there is a double bond, and the double bond being there is less stable and therefore more chemically reactive than a simple alkane because there's more electron density for things to react with. Now, because we are now adding something interesting to our molecules, it's not just enough for us to just talk about the length of the chain and then give that a name. We now are going to have something interesting on the molecule. And in order to talk about interesting things on molecules, we're gonna to have to talk about where that interesting thing is on the molecule. And for that, we have a concept called locants. 
A locant is simply a carbon number. So the number of the carbon on the chain that is connected to the interesting thing. In this case, we're going to be talking about the double bond. And in order to name alkenes, we're going to have to talk about the rules. We're going to have to have numbers in the name of the chemical somewhere. And wherever you have numbers, the numbers are separated from the words by dashes and the numbers are separated from other numbers by commas. Other than all that, which I know sounds a bit complicated right now, it is the same basic idea as alkanes. The one final complicating factor is if you do have multiple double bonds on a chain, then you need to have a thing called either a diene if there's two double bonds or trienes if there's three double bonds, and that will become apparent shortly. And alkenes, they are also part of a homologous series, but in this case, the general formula is CN H2N if the molecule contains only one double bond. Each double bond that is on an alkene will drop the number of hydrogens on the overall molecule by two. So let's have a quick look at this idea of locants. I want you to imagine, actually, save imagining, it's on the screen. Look at this molecule here. Right now there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 carbons on this imaginary molecule. You will notice that if I was to add any particular interesting feature, but we're talking about double bonds, so let's make it a double bond. We now have something interesting on the molecule. That interesting thing on the molecule can now be best communicated if I name my molecule with reference to the fact that this thing is on that particular carbon here, carbon number two. We always prefer the lowest numbered carbon. I mean, it's perfectly possible for me to number these things backwards. So I could go one, two, three, four, etc. but that's clunky. We always want to name so that the lowest number is the one that contains the interesting thing, which in this case, it means I start numbering from the left-hand side. And that means that my double bond is starting here at carbon number two. And so I would name this molecule with reference to the fact that that double bond is currently situated on carbon number two. So let's have a quick look at some of the different enes that exist. You'll notice that there is no methene, and that's simply because there is no way for a carbon, one carbon only, to have a double bond to itself. It, carbons can only be double bonded to other carbons, which means we actually start at number two. This molecule here is called ethene, or the more old-timey name for it, which you will come across a lot, is ethylene. The next molecule we have is propene, and we call that propylene. Now you might wonder, why did I just tell you all that stuff about numbering locants, only for us to then start looking at these molecules and there are no locants numbered yet? That is simply because if you look at, say, ethene or ethylene, here is carbon number one. But if I was to turn this molecule around, this could just as easily be carbon number one. There actually is no such thing as carbon number one on a carbon molecule that's only got one and two and nothing else interesting on it. There's nothing, there's no way to refer to one side of it as being one and the other two, when if you look at that thing in a mirror, this could just as easily be one and that could just as easily be two. And it's the same thing down here with propane. If I've got a double bond, it has to go from an edge to the middle. That's the only way I can fit a double bond on a molecule like this. And so for that reason, it's got to be one number one over here. And if I happens to have the double bond on the other side, then that would then be number one. And then this would be number two and then that three, etc. So it just has to work out that way. But uh, on propene and ethene, there is no point numbering it because there is nothing different about it. Butene, on the other hand, is where things start to get different. This is actually a molecule called one butene. But I want you to get used to this kind of naming system where we have the one built into the name. And the reason for that is the thing that I'm labeling on this diagram is the ene functional group. It's the double bond. And the double bond is on carbon number one. If this molecule had been different, maybe this, for example, this would be two butene, not one butene, or more accurately, but two ene. So you can see that this gets a little bit more complicated now move on to the third one, for fourth one actually, pent one ene. Okay, so again, the double bond starts on carbon number one and it's got five carbons. So the prefix pent for the five carbons 
and then one ene because the double bond starts on carbon number one. The next one, see if you can guess. If you said hex two ene, you are right because the double bond, which is referred to by the ene in the name, is on carbon number two. Now let's get a little bit more complicated. Have a quick look, pause the video if you wanna have a quick guess before I start speaking again. This molecule has seven carbons, so we're gonna have hept somewhere in the name, but the question then is how can we get the fact that it has three double bonds into the name? Well, if you remember what we talked about on the previous slide, the way is by doing this. Hepta, one, three, five, triene. So the tri refers to the fact that there are now three of these double bonds. And the 135 refers to the fact that they are on carbons 1, 3, and 5. And as I said before, anytime there is a number in a chemical name, it gets separated from the words by a dash. And anytime there is a number next to another number, we separate those by a comma. Now I gave you a little cheeky reveal a second ago, but let's have a quick look at this last one. Have a look. Three, two, pause the video if you want. One, octa, one, or octa, three, five, if you can read properly. Octa, three, five, diene. Now you'll notice that this molecule is actually symmetrical. If I number from this end, it's one, two, three, or I can number from the other end. One, two, three, there's no difference. So, Let's just go from the left because we're used to doing that more often. One, two, three, the first double bond starts on carbon three. The second double bond starts on carbon five. That means we have octa, three, five, and then the diene refers to the fact that there are two double bonds on this molecule. The last type of molecule we need to look at are alkynes. And as you can imagine, alkenes had a double bond, alkynes have a triple bond. Most of the other stuff that we've talked about relates to alkynes as well except that it's very unlikely to have two triple bonds on the one molecule because triple bonds are actually quite reactive. In fact, the most famous molecule that we come across in our lives that has a triple bond is a chemical called acetylene. And acetylene is used in blowtorches specifically because it's so reactive, it burns really quickly and therefore really hot. And so you can use it for things like welding. Uh, alkynes, have a general formula as well, but now we have two and minus two because with each double bond, we have another opportunity for hydrogens to be taken away, two hydrogens per extra bond. And so therefore a triple bond has four hydrogens less than an alkane. These are some alkynes. Have a quick go at thinking about if you can name them. The first one will be quite hard, so I'll just show you. That is ethine or acetylene is a different name for the same chemical. The next one, propyne. The next one, hopefully you know by now, it is going to be 1-butyne, or more accurately, but-1-ine. The second one, you can see the triple bond is on carbon number 2, so rightly so, it is pent-2-ine. Then we go up to hex, and you can see that it's on carbon number 3, so it is hex-3-ine. Then we go up to a 7, and we're back to the second carbon, so it is hept-2-ine, and then oct-2-ine. I got a little bit lazy there. So there's some examples of alkynes. Now at this point, we're going to take a break from this video and we're going to wrap it up here and we will continue the rest of this video in a part two because otherwise this thing is just going to be too dang long. So I will see you in class or if you wanna stick around for the next upload, I will see you in part two.